Hi there, I'm Valerie Shodine, here to show how to include a word of the year in a planner journal setup. If you are new to having the rewarding experience of having a word theme of the year, check out my blog at ValerieShodine.com. For the past few years, I've started with the inside cover that includes my word, the year's number, and nameplate. I love creatively setting up a journal at the beginning of the year for a fresh new start. The beauty of this type of journal keeping is you can set up your journal in your own unique way that best suits your needs and desires. The pages I've included are either ones I've used throughout the year or ones I want to try and see if they work for me this year. It is definitely a work in progress. Art reflects life and so does the process of bullet or planner journaling. This video shows how I make these pages that incorporate a word of the year to focus on and the video following will include the planner pages that follow these pages. Let's get started on page one. After drawing my image, I replace the stencil and draw around it with a permanent pen here. I've done something a little different by drawing the number of the year rather than just the word on the left-hand side. And that's because my word is two letters long. RE, which is mostly used as a prefix. I've cut a three inch circle and it works out great to put a circle in the middle of it that's cut out because then I can tape it easily as you see here. But if you don't have a three inch stencil, you can always use a lid or something. I like the look of outlining, or in this case, inlining a line with another line, and I use it often in my artwork. So to start here, as you see, I've spritzed my watercolor paints with water. Now I wish I would have spritzed a little bit more because they were all dry, but I'm learning, and so I'm seeing how long it takes for the water to activate the watercolors that are dry in the palette and also how much water can this paper take. So it is a learning process, but I've given myself the art challenge of using water media in my journal this year. That's why I've also chosen a different journal that has 160 GSM paper. I'm using indigo blue here. You can find a list of the supplies I've used below the video in the description. The next color I'm using is quinacridone gold for the interior of the banner. Now I'm making sure that this dries before I put on the indigo on the numbers. You can't see the time lapse here in the film, so I wanted to make sure I let you know that. Then when that dries, I go in with a little bit of orange and just tint the edges. I'm kind of wanting an on fire look and the light in the darkness type of look for my banner here. So those are kind of symbolic. Now this gold paint, oh, I really like it. It's really shimmery and goes on really nice. It's kind of addicting to paint with. And I think it's just perfect for an emblem like this that frames it as really special and of value. So I'm coloring the exterior of the emblem, the banner, and then the interior letters with a Jelly Roll gold pen. Once the gold pen is dry, I go in with a 005 micron pen to finish off the lettering if the gold has gotten into the black, and then I outline all the letters and numbers. Once again, I said I really like this double outline thing, even though it can be overdone, and I have overdone it, but I think it looks good here and a little bit old world. Okay, so now I am painting stencils with these mid-century modern star stencils by Stencil Girl Products and using the watercolor with a cosmetic sponge. This is my first time trying it, so I wish I would have let more water soak into the watercolor paint because it, it is quite thick and nice, but I just didn't have quite enough here. Anyway, I'm living and learning as I go and 
I don't know, the stars are one of those shapes for me that just brings such hope and light in the darkness. So it's something that I felt I really needed this year that's been a rough year for all of us, really. And so I'm just putting stars here. I don't know, I didn't really plan on this. So when I wrote out my uh, symbols and everything, it wasn't even on my list, but here it is. And I like how it kind of goes out of this planet or space kind of circle from the center. Do you think you can have too many stars? <laughs> I may find out, so you could be the judge of that. I just keep on going and keep on going and then a few touches with the gold pen on the interior of the blue. I'm using a jelly roll and then with the white Signo pen there. I do like that because it creates some more contrast. And speaking of contrast, I like how that white pen outlines the gold on the blue and it really makes it pop a bit more. And now that I'm looking at it, the 2021 could use some contrast. So I'm going to go in with some indigo on top of it, mix a little uh, other blues in there with it to brighten it up. And I think that looks better with the numbers darker that stand out more. Now for the nameplate side of the page. I'm covering up the lines with a white paint pen because I don't really want them there. And I'm going to put two strips of washi tape there, but washi tape is a bit transparent. So after the paint pen dries, I just put two strips of washi tape and then I can write my name with the calligrapher marker. Now I take a close look after I add a few stars and see, is there anything else that's needed? And I see, oh yeah, I can make the letters and numbers stand out even more with this highlight made with a Signo pen. I think that looks good and I'm going to call this page done. One page I include in my journal is a themes page and these usually include visual themes or symbols that I'd like to focus on or make sure I include in my journal throughout the year. I know I might be unique in this, but if you think it would help you then by all means I would encourage you to have a theme page as well. I'm using another banner from the same stencil and also a cosmetic sponge. My paints were dry when I put that water on them and to be honest, I've used a little too much water here. It didn't bleed through, but I think it would have been better to have a bit drier sponge. Now I'm going over the contents with that same Posca pen because I want to put another piece of washi tape on that line there and drying my banner because like I said, I did put quite a bit of water on it. Now I'm using this stencil I designed for Stencil Girl products and it has a script alphabet and also a sans serif one and the months of the year and a grid. Once I'm done stenciling the letters, I like to connect the letters with the pen so that you can't even tell a stencil was used. And then as you can see, placing my stencil on the banner to draw around it. To pull the banner together, it's really easy to do by drawing this outline around the edge of it. And so you actually don't have to do any more shading, but you could. My main theme for the year are the comforts of home. And so coffee and tea are one of my greatest comforts, and I think a lot of ours. So I'm going to use those as well as seasonal symbols throughout. Now the shapes I'm going to use are circles, a symbol of wholeness, and one of my favorites. Then abstract shapes represent the unknown. Now for a bit more shading on the banner with raw umber and then I'm going to do something different around the edge and that is go in with some of the indigo and do kind of a faded wash out from the edge to look like a night sky. Once again the light shining in the darkness.
Now to decorate the theme page. Well, I have my stars here and I've squeezed out my sponge more so I don't have too much water and the paint is just right. So these stars went on so easy. But what I didn't realize when I was doing this is I didn't realize I wasn't really putting the themes that were on my list on the themes page. Now, it makes me ask why. And I think because the abstract shapes are representing the unknown. And to be honest, I'm not as comfortable working with abstract shapes as I am with real shapes. So here I go. And I'm thinking about that as I work on this next page, which I also had to go over with the Posca pen and then put the washi tape on top. Okay. Now, as I'm thinking about it, what do I do? Well, I do what I'm sure of first, so I fill in the outside of the banner line with gold. And then add the stars. And this whole time, I'm thinking, what should I do about this page? It doesn't really have the themes that are on the themes page. So my overarching theme is the comforts of home. Coffee and tea will be a theme throughout, and so I just write those doodles in, and then I decided to add the stars as one of the list. It kind of looks planned that way. Color it in with some gold and thinking, you know what, I'm just going to add some circles and abstract shapes. I don't think the page visually needs it, but it's what the page is about. So what does this tell me? When I do something like this that's unexpected and doesn't seem to go, I ask myself, why am I doing this? What does it say? And I think it says, I'm uncomfortable with stepping into the unknown represented by the abstract shapes. It's not something I'm used to. That's how I feel about going into the next year. And so I'm going to go with it though and not give up and just face the unknown, add more things that are like the unknown until I get comfortable. So that's what I'm doing here and trying to connect the known or my comfort with the shapes of the stars with the unknown. It is said art reflects life. That's true and it's also true of journaling and journaling a word of the year and bullet journaling. Doing pages like this, it's amazing how much we learn about ourselves. I learned things about myself in the process of doing this page and I think that's one of the beauties of journaling like this and very helpful. Now whether I like the more pristine page with just the stars or the busyness of the abstract shapes, lines, and doodles added, at this point I just accept that it is what it is. So once again, art reflects life. Okay, to recover, I decided I just want a big dark piece of washi tape on the next content pages and I'll call it good. I'll write the page numbers in gold and then the themes and I'll be done. Let's move on to the next page, which is one of my favorites, the definition page. Since January of 2020, the prefix re, R-E, has been highlighted to me, appearing everywhere. Years ago, I made a list of RE words, and I knew that one day it would be the word of the year. But I also knew, because it's so strange, that that particular year would be a different and strange year. Well, the time is now. RE is full of paradox and possibility. The prefix RE begs the question, how are we going to do this again? Currently, how are we going to enter and live out this new year? RE means again and again, like a repeat of what's been done before. But it also is tied to doing something in an entirely new way, or to get back to an intended state of being, to begin anew. With all the unknown and unrest in the world right now, this little word is perfect for the new year. RE is inviting me to have a word or words of the month, and I feel excited to make special pages in my journal each month designated to my RE word. After reading about RE being the chemical symbol of rhenium, having the second highest melting point, and when combined with other metals is used for heating filaments, x-ray machines, and jet turbine blades, 
It resonated with me symbolically. If there is ever a time when we need to learn to work together, take the heat, see what is true underneath the surface, and take action to fly into our destiny, the time is now. The fun part about having this word, mostly a prefix, is that it can relate to you and your word of the year too. For example, if your word of the year is intentional and the re-word of the month is renew, a question or questions can help know where newness is needed. Where would you like to experience newness, growth or improvement? Or what are you passionate about? What new step could you take today to grow or bring order to daily life? If your word is fruitfulness, let's say, the word renew could become a question like, what do I need to do in order to live a more fruitful life? Is there one thing I could do today that would be a step to growth or productivity? Those are just a couple of ideas to help navigate the transition from 2020 to 2021 and to keep going throughout the year, watch monthly Plan With Me videos on my blog showing how to set up a calendar and planning pages for the month. To go deeper into applying a word of the year and connecting with others, join me for Plan With Me Premium 2021. Find out all the details on my website at ValerieShodine.com. I continue to experiment with the banners here I'm using pencil to kind of shade it or outline to make it look more three-dimensional. I'm smoothing it in with a stump and where it got a little too smudgy or more than I wanted, I simply go in with an eraser and erase it. Once again, going in with my metallic gold jelly roll pen for the RE there. and following with the outline of the white signal pen. Back in with my little 005 micron pen with the black outline. creating more contrast with another coat of indigo blue, drying it, and then finishing off with the sparkle of some stars within there. I kind of like this classy look of this banner here and the pristine look of the page, but then I realized I was gonna try and tie it in with the themes page. So I added the abstract shapes, circles and dots. Now for the Year at a Glance calendar page. This page can get a little tedious to do, but I use it all the time. Each of the numbers of the days are on a dot. So that's one way I just section it out with two dot spaces in between the rows of the months, as you see here. I'm keeping it simple by using my gold pen and a small 01 or 005 pen. I could have left it just as it is, but I decided to add a little pattern at the top and the bottom of the page to tie it into the busyness of the opposite page. Next, I look over both pages together and see is there anything that it needs, a little doodle here or there. After I'm done with that, I take another look at the two page spread. And if satisfied, then I call it finished. The next two page spread I work on is a word insight page. And after I do my word study, I take it all in. And if I have to summarize what's meaningful to me, I do that on two pages. This year is different. What I did because my word is being used as a prefix for the most part is I'm making a list of words that start with my prefix. I've made some here, but I've also left a bit of space where if I find more, I can add them in. So with the micron pen, I'm just going in and outlining and thickening up the line there. Now you'll notice I've already written a bunch of rewords in pen, and then there's a space for the monthly reword. And what I'm going to do is have one or two rewords 
for each month and feature those within my journal close to the calendar page. Down the vertical side of this banner, I'm writing why I have a prefix as my word of the year this year. A strange word for strange times full of possibilities and applications. I'm making a box here to revisit my monthly words that I'll choose and write in the space provided. A brush pen gives the box a drop shadow. Then I erase the whole thing and it's ready for paint. I'm going in with some cobalt teal for this banner to change things up a bit. Then I'm going in with some indigo or Payne's gray to make the shadow there. Moving to the other side of the page, I'm using the same colors of the teal here, but honestly, I'm putting too much water on it. It's not that it bleeds through because it looks like it does at first, but then it dries. But the thing is, is that it wrinkles the page. So while that dries, I'm going over with some permanent scarlet to the opposite side, and then I dry it. It looks okay, but I am not fond of the wrinkles. I'm going to put some abstract designs, especially circles and dots, in the space here. Now, I'm putting this here because I've left that space in case I want to put some more rewords, but I might not. I've added more water here and pushing the limits, which kind of makes me think there's another solution that I'll be using to fill in spaces like that with color. Necessity is the mother of invention. So once again, finishing off with pen doodles, I'm using silver in this portion of it, which I really like with these colors of the light teal and the coral pink here, but I'll probably add some gold just to include some gold on the page. It's been helpful for me to have scripture in my Word of the Year journal because it provides a great reference. And if I ever feel a little bit lost about my word, I can just look at the beginning of my journal and there it is. I do the word study with scripture and I choose those scriptures that are the most relevant and then I include them in my journal. I also do the same thing with quotes. On the internet, in a search box, I put my word in and then the word quotes and then I search for quotes that are relevant to me that include my word of the year or the idea of my word of the year. Now this year is quite different though. I've written out the chapter Romans 8 in my journal to refer to all year and then as I do the monthly rewords and have scripture that goes with each of those words then I will feature that scripture on a monthly basis instead of at the beginning of my journal. You can see I'm keeping it relatively simple. It just has the banner, the name of the page, the reference, and as a spiritual practice, wrote out the entire chapter with pencil and then went over it with pen. So it's kind of an activity too that uh, can be spiritual as well as creative and record what I wanna focus on this year. I thought this banner could use a little more pizzazz and so the outline here I connected the gold lines to make it look more realistic and then went over it with the 005 micron pen. And I'm adding a drop shadow of the gold to the black and then a highlight on the opposite side with the white pen. After a touch up with the micron pen the word scripture is done. Then I just used a pencil I had hanging around the studio for some shading around the banner. Here are my main scripture pages for the year and in the following video you'll see how I set up the planner pages of the journal. This little word gives us the opportunity to experience a new word each month that can help bring your word of the year to everyday life. Find out all the details on my website at ValerieShodine.com.